What's good? I'm, all right. I'm going to jump into it. <laughs> reason we got this gentleman, <laughs> reason we got this gentleman here is because he does personal training. He making sure you get fit. And if you did not know, it's about 48% of African Americans in America who are overweight or clinically obese. Mm. So we decided that it would probably be beneficial if we got mm -hmm. somebody in here to help you get lean, especially with summer right Someone around the corner. Someone that knows what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. With spring break around the corner, too. Mm -hmm. so, you know, everybody trying to get a, a bit ready for the summer you know, and everything like that. Trend, it's like, keep it everybody wants. Summertime fine. Summertime mm -hmm. fine. Yeah, I would hope it's lifetime fine. But if you yeah. just want it for the summer, I got the summertime guy. Maybe we could push it out for a lifetime. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> a little bit. Hey, oh, bro, I'm just telling you like this, man. I'm getting old. I don't want the beer belly. I don't. I don't want to look like my daddy. Hey, you like, know, I, I, look, we got to redefine what the dad bod is. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean, like, yeah. I got clients right now that's like, yo, when you're 25 or 25 years from now. Uh, see how you feel, cause I be telling them like, yo, you need to get up, you need to get up, like get up a little faster. Like when you're 25 or 25 years from now, and you start feeling your bones, this, that, and that, I'm like, look, when I'm 25 years from now, I'm I'm gonna be deadlifting what I'm doing. I'm gonna be moving the way I, right. I'm, I'm moving now, because I'm gonna take care of my body. You know what's funny? A lot of elderly people used to tell me when I was younger, man, don't get old. Meaning, keep working out, keep doing the things that you do, because right. when you stop doing that. You it's lose hard. it, bruh. If you don't use it, you lose it. Like when I first started college, I could do the splits. Yeah. For the life of me, I can never do that. Oh, I don't dang. think I could ever get back there. You better than me. I could never do that. I could never do that. Bruh, I've been doing martial arts forever and I still can't get back to it. I, I, I still I can't get back I haven't been doing martial arts forever and I could never get to it to get back yeah, to it. Yeah. No, but difficult. I commend you for that. I respect you <laughs> yeah. for that. That's the next level. I could. <laughs> That's next level. So nah. with 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 forty eight percent of African Americans out here overweight, and I'm sure, and don't think it's, I think it's like thirty two percent of you know Caucasians. I think Asians are doing quite well when it comes to fitness mm -hmm. yeah. for some odd reason. They live a really long time. I tell you that. Mm -hmm. That too. Yeah. So with that being said, when it comes to African Americans specifically for right now, anyway. Mm -hmm. What do you feel like are some of the contributing factors to, you know? So you got to look at the the overall, like, the overall scope of where our people are, right? Now, granted, I didn't, I didn't grow up, me personally, I didn't grow up in a, in a, an underpoverished or un impoverished uh, community. Right. But I've been to places where, I've I've seen it right. You, mm. you don't you don't have parks where kids can go out and play. Right. You don't have um, a socioeconomic um, structure that is very conducive to to our people a lot right. of times. Right. Like yeah. granted, there's a lot of people that come up out of poverty and do their thing. Right. Like I can say that my parents have done that. Both of them were not impoverished, but had less than most. Right. Okay. So like you know, just having having a better infrastructure for to 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 let kids go out and be kids, right. you know. Um, another thing is education. Like mm -hmm. a lot of us aren't educated around fitness. You know, we our our culture was never really huge on fitness, and there's a lot of cultures that that aren't. But I think that more specifically, it wasn't set up for us to succeed in that mm -hmm. sense. Right. And granted, there's a lot of us now that are trying to make that happen. Like that was one of the reasons why I actually got into um, training is because I had a grandfather after my grandmother passed away, my, a grandfather who had high blood pressure. He wasn't, he's not a big guy, but he didn't know what to eat because she made everything. But my mm -hmm. grandmother was from South Carolina. So he just ate whatever, yeah. you know, yeah. high sodium and all this time. And granted, sodium is not necessarily bad, but if you're already set up for a high sodium diet and you start to feel like, you know, like you got high blood pressure, all that stuff, like you're, you're setting yourself up for failure, right? Mm -hmm. um, but education is huge. Um, our our cultural food, you know, a lot of us yeah. come from the south, bro. <laughs> True you statement. Know? Like like I said, my grandmother, she's from she was from South Carolina. My grandfather was born in Dallas and moved up to Ohio. So you figure he spread whatever kind of food uh, uh, he was used to up there. You right. know? So like mm -hmm. everybody's eating soul food. We eat fried chicken. We eat, we eat, like that. Right. Even though that may be a, a a stereotype. It's still it's, true. It's true. Yeah. Like it's based it. in something. I, eat, I like fried chicken. I don't mm -hmm. eat it a lot, but I like fried chicken. But those things, like, 
you know, having that quick fix, like we got um, like Kentucky Fried Chicken and Church's Chicken and Popeyes, Popeyes and, and they're all yeah. in our communities yeah. right. because they're quick, easy, easy things to get. Easy access. Like, you know, we have moms that are working multiple jobs, right. dads that are working multiple jobs. Like you got to get quick food and that's tough. And people just don't understand how to, you know, necessarily meal prep for themselves or set themselves up to where um, they can su succeed in a nutritional state. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that right there kind of works against them. Then you're looking at things that are um, like as far as like the 48 percent. You're looking at things that are um, misconceptions about genetics. Right. Oh, I'm you know, this just runs through my family. So that's just how it is. Yeah, you may pre be predisposed to something, but that doesn't mean you have to live with that. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. like you may be predisposed to to heart disease, but you're going to keep eating fried chicken. Yeah. And, you're you know not going to change it a little bit. Exactly, you're not going to switch you know? the narrative. Like, like their cancer runs through my, my dad right now has been living with prostate cancer for 12 years, mm -hmm. if not longer. And all he did when he found out that he had markers for that and he ended up having like prostate cancer, the doctor wanted to start chopping up on, on, on the prostate and changing his whole quality of life. My dad was like, hell no, you're not right. going to do that to me. And the doctor was like, well, what do you mean? We need to remove this now. He's like, is it doing anything? He's like, no. My dad has been living with that ever since then. All he did was change his diet and start. And he already worked out, but he just changed his diet even more to make it even, even better for himself. Right. And he ended up lowering his pH levels for his prostate over that time so we have these misconceptions that because it runs through the family you have to you're, you're destined for that you know uh, what i mean high blood pressure um you're uh, you're destined for you know for for cancer which eventually it may happen but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to live um to feed it you know what i mean right so just changing those things um and then social media with their all all or nothing approach like people are like you gotta go hard you gotta all days in and, and really and truly you're messing up people's mental health and and then they you force them in a way to where they eat in a, in a manner that doesn't really work in their favor so right. where that 48 percent comes from there's a lot of different factors that are working against us but we we just the main thing is let's educate ourselves and put ourselves in a better state of mind to where we can succeed you know that that that's where we really have to go right so I ain't even gonna lie. I could get with you on a lot of this stuff because my dad's been living with cancer for, I think, three years now, yeah. but it's not high. It's like, I think it's like 2% for prostate. Got you. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, nah, I don't know about doing certain things. I'm like, is it really affecting me like that? Yeah. And my dad, he used to be a workout junkie. Like, mm. he would run all the time. He'd do push ups, just out of the blue kind of things like that. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Now, he's lost a little weight now, but I still see him trying to push forward. And he's like, man, I'm going to do what I can. Yeah, I'm not going to let this be the thing that defines me. Yeah, And mm -hmm. I could respect that a lot. And then when you talk about the community, man... I've grew up all around DFW. Yeah. I've been in North Dallas, yeah. South Dallas, Oak Cliff, Pleasant Grove most of my life. Mm -hmm. All kinds of stuff like that. And I always know it's in the hood. Mm. They ain't never got nothing healthy. Yeah. They always give you fried chicken, um, Burger King, McDonald's. Definitely McDonald's. Mm -hmm. McDonald's. McDonald's all with everywhere. It. No. McDonald's everywhere. But they know. Like, look, look at the commercials. Mm -hmm. they, look, they got hip hop commercials. They cater to us. Right? First yeah. of all, Pusha T is Which, the reason we say I'm loving it. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> right, right, real, <laughs> right. Like, like, Let's just be real about yeah. it. You know, that's real. So, but it's like they don't ever give you nothing good. But I'm like, I know the system kind of set up for us. Yeah. Right. Well, not set up for us, but it's designed for us to be obese, unhealthy. But we don't have to live that same way. And that's why I'm like, man, I'm 35 years old, man. I got to lose some weight. Yeah, I can't fine. be out here doing the same things. Like when you were 20, man, you could go get some chicken real quick, yeah. go work out, go on about your business. You good. You still look good. Oh, yeah. Boy. Do Duh, that now. But you to, gained five pounds looking look, at I used, it. I used to hit up Walmart when I was younger. I used to hit up Walmart after I worked out and go get me one of them rotisserie chickens. Then I go right over there, too. I eat the whole thing by myself. Mm. Then I go get me some pizza. <laughs> and then I go give me some burgers. <laughs> yeah, just... you know, but like, but that was me being young and not not understanding. 
and it, and I did come from a healthier lifestyle. You know what I mean? Like my parents mm. did did feed us pretty healthy for the most part. Right. But when you're out on your own doing your own things, you know, you know, you may be you may lose sight of that stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's it's the it's the discipline that that you kind of have to instill in yourself. And and some people right. just don't know how to start that. You mm. know, I I had to backtrack. You know, when I was, I think it was, I think I was a junior at UNT. And uh, I weighed myself, boy. I weighed two sixty. I'm only five nine and three quarters, bro. I look like a oompa loompa, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, but you still had them swole arms, though. Yeah, you know. But that belly was out there, though. So <laughs> I know. I was you, like, I know the feeling, bro. yeah. I, I said I had to get rid of it. I, had I to get feel. Rid of it. Yeah, I feel you. So I just changed some things, and that and that was at the time I was I was dating uh, my wife, you know, and she was standing next to me. I'm like, dang, I look like two times the size of her. And not in a good way. Like, it wasn't like yeah. I was... Like, just like, jet. like oh, I was like, like, well, I was like, here. So, mm-hmm. But, yeah, but I, I, I understand that, bro. Like, it's it's, it's tough. But it's, that's it's, one, it's tough. like, even now, I look, look at myself now, and I'm like, bro, you know, you had... I ain't gonna lie. I was arrogant in college. I'm even arrogant now. But I look at the mirror sometimes, I'm like, bro, right, do you really have the right to be arrogant like that anymore? Yeah. Like... Because when I was, at least when I was in college, I was like, oh, I look a little stocky. You know, I had a little yeah. belly, mm-hmm. you know, but it wasn't that bad. Yeah. You get, you, you get your little thermal on, yeah. you straight. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it was funny because. Hey, Wintertime, throw a little flag jacket on. Flag jacket, bro, straight. straight. Like, <laughs> like, I remember, still. he even remembered it too. Back in the day, I hear thermal. People over there are like, oh, you look like you swole. I'm like, I mean, my fat look good in the right places, so I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I ain't tripping. So you're going to keep wearing the thermals. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. keep wearing these thermals Roll like the that. Sleeve, maybe. Yeah, you, you know. know I'm like, oh, look like I'm swole. Got a lot of compliments for it. Then I'm like, I put on thermal a couple of weeks ago. I'm like, bro, take that off. Take it, go and take it off. No, nah, this don't work for you no hey, more. that's how it was for me. That's, that's why I changed, bro. That's, that's why I had to crazy. change my way. I'm like, man, I got to get in this gym, so... Like I said, I'm going on a month right now, and I don't want it to be that New Year's resolution because yeah. that's what most people do. They fall it, off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, like, I've seen the gym crowd Around up. February, that's when oh, oh, yeah. people going to start it's falling off hard. Yeah. That's the mass exodus right there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's when that's where gyms really make their money because then they don't have to worry about people being in there. There's no liability because ain't nobody coming nobody in. Nobody coming and in. And they just paying memberships. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. You know, and then they get to the wave yeah, and they like, cancel membership out you. in the summertime, possibly. Yeah. Because they're taking trips, and they're like, oh, I need to save some money for the holidays coming up soon. So, so my question for you. Yeah. How many days a week is actually good, beneficial? I know some people will say every day. Yeah. But, like, I'm just being honest. One of the things is some people don't have enough time to go all the time, every time. Yeah. So, what is beneficial things you could do to... <clears throat> Like change your outcome. Yeah. Right. So, so the problem that people have, and this is what this is what media tells you, is that you need to go to the gym. Now, granted, I love the gym. I like training people in the gym, right? And that's mm-hmm. that's that's one of the best places to me. I think that resistance training is medicine. I think m- movement is medicine overall, but resistance training kind of kind of gets you there faster, right? In my opinion. Um, but you don't have to go to the gym every day. You can do stuff right, right in your house, you know? You can do stuff for five minutes. I've literally set up things for people where they do what I call micro-flex workouts. Five minutes. They get up in the morning, five minutes of workout, five minutes after lunch, five minutes in the evening on a day that they don't train with me. And mm. some people ask me, how many days a week do you do you want me to train? I'm like, well, how many are you training right now? They're like, none. I said, how about you start with one? Yeah, just get in the door. Just get in the door. And then you might actually like it. Yeah. Or mm-hmm. you might it might lead you to a different path. Like some people like hiking, some people like uh, rock climbing, um, some people like to swim. You know, depending on what your goal is, that's that's where it is. Like for me, my goal is to be strong and to be be mobile because I have a two year old son who is. Oh, I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know he's what I'm saying. A, you have a two year old son who's a two year old son. Yes, <laughs> and he's my two year old son. So like, it's, he's, gotta, it's, 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 gotta, y'all know how I am. Mm-hmm. So, um, but, but, but anyway, no, like it, it really, it really depends on, on the person and what their goal is. And mm-hmm. if you're just trying to have general health and wellness, we'll just say like, let's give us an avatar of a person, someone who's trying to have general health and wellness and move better. You should do something every day. 
You really should. Be, if you want to be more mobile, do mobility on the days that you're not in the gym. Like just not, and I don't mean just like stretching. Stretching is cool and all, but like yeah. actually mobilizing the body, putting it in like yoga, like sit, sit, uh, situational or situations where it's going against the grain. If you're mm-hmm. always typing, you need to start opening up. You feel me? Right. So, um, as far as resistance training, though, I, I try to encourage my people to do two to four times a week. Now, most people will benefit from just two. You know, mm-hmm. um, if you have, if you need a little extra love, three. If you're already pretty advanced, four. You know, like mm-hmm. me, I, I personally only do three days a week because that's what I enjoy. Um, on the other days, I do mobility. And I might change it out to do things like, you know, farmer's walks or you're just carrying some heavy weights. Yeah. Right. Mm. Or like suitcase carries with a barbell or like sled pushes. Like, I honestly, I don't even do, I don't do a lot of just straight up running. I do sprints here and there. Um, I do batter ropes um, every once in a while for conditioning. But I don't, I'm not a fan of just like getting on the treadmill and running. That's boring to me, mm. honestly. So I walk. I enjoy walking. I put my headphones on. I listen to a podcast. I listen to music. Mm-hmm. And, and, and working out doesn't have to be working out. It needs to be practicing something that you enjoy for life because everything's so, functional. So it's more like because what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm listening to you, most people when I get on, you know, you hop on a social media, you hop on a thing, and they're telling you, oh, you know, I, one, I hate the word diet because it's like at that point you're telling me like I have to give something up. Yeah. But how you're preaching it, how you putting it out is more so like, no, nah, we gonna just we gonna just gradually change your life. Exactly. So mm-hmm. instead of trying to tell you, oh, you know what, no, nah, you can't eat that, you can't eat that, or you know what, run, run down to the store, don't buy nothing, run back home, then run. Yeah. No. Nah, I just want you to move. Exactly. <laughs> Let's start mm-hmm. there. So exactly. it's like foundation building the groundwork and then you just stair stepping your way up to exactly. your overall fitness goals exactly a lot of people try to run before they can walk right yeah you know what i mean yeah <laughs> and, and i don't mean that because we were just talking about mm-hmm. walking and running but literally you think about it, a lot of people try to they they get this mo the motivational high motivation i always say to people motivation is fickle discipline is certain and right. if you start instilling discipline in yourself to do things and it doesn't have to be everything at once like Okay, you're not eating vegetables right now. How about you add vegetables to your, your meals you once once a day? Just once a day. Okay, and then build on that, maybe twice a day. Okay, now, okay, we're not eating enough protein. How about you, you're not eating breakfast for, for some reason. So you, you add an egg for breakfast, or you add a, a smoothie with Greek yogurt in it so you get more protein in your day. Right. You know, you start adding on that, and you habits are are like a snowball effect. Mm-hmm. You start building on those habits and, and they start to compound to good things. Or they can compound to bad things, which a lot of people have let happen. With mm-hmm. the pandemic happening and whatnot, we, a lot, a lot of people, people sit, sit at home, you know? Right. Like, one of my clients is a, a 17-year-old boy, or 16-year-old boy, at um, that actually goes to the high school that I went to when I, when mm-hmm. I was that age. And the whole school was shut down for COVID. Which mm-hmm. I, I understand that they're trying to, their, their goal Make is to sure keep the kids safe, safe and kid, and the teachers safe. But what do you do with a kid that's the school shut down and they're not doing homework? They're not, like, there's no. nothing that, like, he's at home. Mm. He's at home. And granted, he was stimulating his mind because he was studying for his ACTs and whatnot. Right. But that's all he did. He didn't go outside. He didn't do none of that. So. So, as a. I mean, granted, I understand he was a kid, but as a parent, do you feel like it is part of our job to be like, hey, I understand your circumstances are different. Yeah. But the overall goal is you, you got to get outside, G. Like, yeah. you got to move. If like, you look at this generation versus yeah, our generation and <clears throat> home back, <clears throat> right. this generation spends more time inside than any other generation because oh, yeah. of technology. Yeah. Technology is so advanced now. Man, I do it from here, over there. Oh, yeah. Name one person and you know that from the age of 15 down, they don't got a phone. Yeah. 
That's Most true. of us got our phone when we were like 16, 17, oh, yeah. 18. I was, there, I was in high school. Yeah. Like sophomore, junior. My, my mm. brother gave me my first phone. Uh. He, it was a phone that he had. It was yeah. a prepaid phone. Yeah. And then, you know, he upgraded. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, you know. Hey, here, have yeah, this. Here, have this. And yeah. I was like, okay. I, 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 mm-hmm. I literally used it for numbers. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then, no, 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 Same thing. Like, like, you, if you need to reach me, it's enough minutes on here to call me and see where I am. Yeah. I don't, mm-hmm. Other than that. Other than that. That's yeah. it. It's, it's a piece of plastic. But you used to go out, play football, throw up tackle, play soccer, play yeah. stick ball, something. You did something. But right. now more kids are playing video games than ever. That's yeah. basically and what you want to do. That's what. So I feel like we grew up in a, in a space to where every channel you wanted to watch as a kid before TiVo yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like Sonic <clears throat> only going to be on for this 30 minutes. So mm-hmm. you need to figure out what you finna do after that 30 minutes because yeah. it's done. Yeah. Whereas mm-hmm. now I pop into Netflix, I pop oh, on the binge Hulu. Watch. Mm-hmm. Binge watch. And then I feel like binge watching is the new, is the new gorge. It's yeah. like, okay, I sit in the house. You already know I got the chips, the snacks, the cookies of this. Yeah. So it's probably not the best space for somebody trying to lose no. weight. And now you're going to tell me I'm going to sit here for the next 24 watching a show where it's I've never seen nobody just get up and actually move around while watching yeah. the show. So I'm going to sit, be idle. Yeah. I'm going to have these Oreos. And that's my, that's my general mode. That's how yeah. I'm, that's where I'm at. That, that, that right there is, I mean, now granted, we've all done the binge watching thing. Yeah. I've done the binge watching thing. I ain't even going to lie. When, when we were on lockdown, I, me, that's all me and my wife did. I gained mm-hmm. 20 pounds myself. And I was like, wait, we just sitting here and, I'm gonna say I like to drink still. Okay, but mm-hmm. we were just sitting there. I was sipping whiskey in the garage, and we were enjoying the the, the 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 warm weather. Our son was only three months old, three and a half months old at that time, so we were enjoying that time with him. But we would watch TV and go outside and eat. That's it. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, "Dang, I gained 20 pounds." And I don't typically weigh myself, right? But I noticed I was a little. A little more mm-hmm. rotund around the edge, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, let me let me go ahead and see what this looked like. And it was, I was like, oh no, nah, this something got to change. I went from doing fifteen thousand steps a day to doing five thousand steps, mm-hmm. five thousand, and five thousand mm-hmm. was a push too, right. right? So I started, I changed, I changed what I was doing. I started getting more active around the house because I was like, I don't know how long I'm gonna be here. I moved, I moved everything around in the in the uh, garage to make a home gym. I started trying to acquire equipment from different places. I bought a barbell. Um, I, I didn't really own a barbell. I, lo- I love using a barbell, but I would go to other gyms to use it. Mm-hmm. So right. I was like, you know what? If we're going to be here, I'm going to set up my own home gym. Mm-hmm. Um, I started doing things like landscaping around the house. I started painting the, the fence. I started just doing stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And then I started slowly seeing it come back off because I was right. doing 10,000 to 15,000 steps a day. So um, I think that, like, yeah, every once in a while, it's okay to just sit and enjoy yourself, right? Um, but you shouldn't do it every day. Yeah. Or if you're going to sit there and binge watch something, how about you get up and do some squats? Right. When people say they don't have time. We do. We, we have time. We have time. Everybody Make has. Time for what you I want. hate to sound cliche, but every trainer says, we got the same 24 hours in a day and blah, blah, blah. You can do this and that. But it's true. You do Honestly. have the same 24 hours. Right. And you're mm. not always working. You're not always sleeping. You know, um, there's going to be some time. And even if it's 10 minutes in a day, it's better than not doing anything at all. Right. You feel me? Mm. So you just have to implement it. Or some people say, like, I want to spend time with my kids. Well, how about you interact with your kids in that that sense? You know? Right. Like, you can be active with your kids and then, you know, pick your kid up, do some squats with them, and then play with them again or, or whatever, you know? Right. Like, the other day, my wife was doing a Zumba class on um, – or a Zumba video on our TV uh, while I was training, and our son was there, and he was just dancing with her, you know? <laughs> just following her. And that was that was fun to them, you know what I mean? She sent me a video, and I was like, "Oh, that's that's dope," you know. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not I'm I'm not a huge fan of Zumba for myself, but <laughs> if he want to just get up and move around, the kid's active, so I'm cool with that. Yeah, burn the kids. So, I respect yeah. that. Yeah. So, <clears throat> with the conversations, and, and I'm glad you brought your your wife into it because that that's what I'm leading to next. Yeah. <laughs> how, <laughs> so, how will one go about, in your opinion, of course? Mm motivating their spouse to you know take on the workout journey i don't like i don't want to say it as if you know you're doing it and then she's not and then you jump on her for but like yeah. or 
say, no, nah, you need to go to the gym and I'm going to sit back you and don't shit. Get yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. But how do you get to a point where, no, I'm a, I'll am i be in there. Yeah. I want you to go. How do I get you there? Because I know it's overall for your health. It's overall for your longevity. I, I, I got to be a little jerk real quick. Jerk. Nah. My whole thing is, and let's be honest, I don't want to be in here trying to work out hard and you over here eating cakes and stuff like that. Yeah. And we looking like, oh, you know, you the big girl or like yeah. whether it's a man or woman, like as a woman, you don't want to be looking fine and your old husband over here or boyfriend, whoever yeah. over here looking like some biscuit dough. The same thing that I don't want my wife to be out here looking like a can of busted biscuits, and I'm over here like, oh y'all look, you know, you, you know, know look uh, like oh you look good, y'all, you're my, y'all so cute together, yeah. yeah. It's like, uh, <laughs> oh how you yeah. get that? And yeah. then you gotta show an old picture. This is what she used to look like, <laughs> oh, but this is what he used to look yeah. like. Oh, okay, this I see. We, this is this right here. Yeah, this, <clears> this, <throat> this is where we came. No, from. but I, I I get that. Like, okay, so my man, I struggled. I struggled with this um, for a little while because when I first started training, I wanted. I tried to train my wife, and oh my god, it was not good because I'm. She, I, who wants to take orders from the person that they live with? Right. You know, to, you know, you're giving them more control. You know, and at that time, my training style was completely different. Mm. It was it was not good for for the average person. And and now I realize that. Well, I, I started realizing that some years back. But that's why I changed how I how I train and, and the whole mentality behind it. Um, because I was the Instagram trainer. I was trying to get likes and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Right. Mm -hmm. And now I don't care. I, don't, I mean, I, I put stuff on my Instagram because I like to educate people and I like to give kudos to my clients. And I like to, every once in a while, I will show me working out because I want people to see that I actually do what I speak, right? right. But the number one thing is you got to start with yourself, right? Mm -hmm. how, do you, how are you expecting someone to do, like if you're not already doing it, you got to mm -hmm. start with yourself. That's the number one thing because a lot of people... There are there are people out there like girl you need to go to the gym and lose weight or man you need to go to the gym and lose weight you getting kind of fluffy around the edges but they ain't doing nothing themselves mm -hmm. you know or they, they they say okay well you should you should you need to stop eating uh, all that food but they still eating all the same stuff right. you know what I mean now everybody's goals are different but if if your wife's sitting throwing down fried chicken and you over here grilling up some chicken they got conflicting yeah. conflicting, conflicting things going ideas. on you know what mm -hmm. I mean. Um, Another thing that that you have to do is kind of make make fitness a a a normal conversation in the house. You know what I mean? Like, don't don't talk at them. You got to talk with them. Like, understand what their goals are. Like, what are you trying to do? Like, where are you trying to be? Like, are you doing this? Are you are you just trying to you know live life and go through the motions? Or do you want to live a healthier lifestyle? Because who's let's say you have kids, right? If, mm -hmm. Do you want us both to die because we have a bad heart and then the kids left alone? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, right. wh wh where are we going with this? Bruh. You know, establish that. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie to you. First of all, I got to give you big kudos because, man, how I first was, uh, I started asking him for advice. First time I asked him for advice, man, I see him on Instagram. I'm like, I've never been a hater, uh -huh. but. I'm a trash talker. I see this nigga with a six pack. I'm like, this nigga, this, <laughs> like, <laughs> hold up. I'm like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> man. It, like, he just put me to shame. And I'm like, I'm over here thinking about it. So I'm like, man, let me ask him a couple of things. Yeah. But when it comes to your spouse, I know, uh, I fully understand what you're talking about. Yeah. Because me and my wife have two different ways of working out. Because yeah. I was always getting the gym. We're going to push this. Yeah. And, right. But I wasn't eating healthy. Yeah. My wife was like, I'm going to eat healthy, yeah. but I ain't going to get in the gym and push this. Yeah. So we over here arguing back and forth. You need to eat better. Well, you need to get in the gym. Yeah. Well, you need to eat better. But going it back never and, came to y'all to just marry yeah. the two? Like, yeah. well, y'all married because, already. Uh, because her whole idea was like, oh, if you eat better, you just going to look this good. I'm like, eh. Uh, you still see that? And, and eh. you know what? Eating, eating is part of it. Eating right. is a huge part mm -hmm. of it. But at the same time, you gotta live. A, you want to live a functional life, and you want to look like yeah. lean, right? You want to look. Yeah, like, I'm like, like I don't want you to be bony. 
yeah. I don't want Boney. I want you to look like, oh, she got that weight back there. But then, you know, <laughs> oh, that eh, kind of chiseling in. And yeah. I know she felt the same way. Yeah. She's like, bro, you working out. But, yeah, you kind of big around the arms. But yeah. this midsection ain't <clears> about <throat> me. nothing right now. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. So now I'm like, here's what we're going to do. We're going to compromise. Yeah. If you see me getting off on some stuff, I'm messing up. I'm like, okay, just let me know, baby. Um, you know, we ain't supposed to be doing certain things. Yeah. If I see you messing up, hey, baby, I'm just let you know. You know, we gotta do a little better. Yeah. Right. Because, like I say, it's still kind of. I love to. I'll go work out. If you say let's go work out, okay, let's go. Yeah. But I'm like, if you say, man, bro, we uh, all we doing is eating this way. I'm like. I hate zucchini. I hate yeah. squash. I hate <laughs> I hate all the good stuff. Yeah. And like I eat broccoli. I eat the hell out of some broccoli. Yeah. But I'm like, man, I gotta put my salt, pepper on that. And yeah. it's like, cheese. yeah. Well, I try to stay do. away from cheese now with the um with the broccoli. But I'm salt like, salt pepper man. ain't bad. Just you, know, <laughs> you just gotta good. understand, like, like. Well, actually, so like, let me go back because you said something really good. Like you was like, um, she she's more into the reducing on on the food or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. You're more into lifting weights, like that's fine. And you, you said something like holding, pretty much holding each other accountable. Like as long as you have as a couple, you set goals for um for yourselves, right? And y'all talk about them. Right. It's it's okay to hold each other accountable because as long as you have a pact, make it to where it's out there in the open. Like you want to let her know, like, hey, I want you to hold me accountable for these mm-hmm. goals. And are you okay with me holding you accountable for these goals too, right? Now back to the broccoli thing, <laughs> right? It's okay to have it's okay to have salt and pepper, right? It's okay to do that. You like, know, it's okay I, I to tried the, the Himalayans. I'm doing the Himalayans. Pink salt, with pink salt, and yeah. everything. But I'm like, man, I got I got I some mineral salt, salt on there. Pretty good. Um, I I just get it through this order that I. It's a subscription. What's box the difference? Like, it help you me what? understand I'm a little bit. Lie to you. I don't know, but. I like my mineral salt. <laughs> yeah, oh, I like okay. mineral salt. I like my mineral salt, so it's, it's okay. good. No, so, but oh, go ahead, bro. Oh, ahead. I was gonna. Well, no, no, no. Finish your point because I was bringing up a whole. It's the same. It's in the same realm, but yeah. it's in my life now. We out of Germany. So I want yeah. you to close his book first. <laughs> no, the only the only thing I was gonna say though, like one of the, one of the things that went before I got before I got back to being fit. One thing that me and my wife used to do when, and I'm not a huge proponent of running. I don't like. I personally don't like running. I think there's other ways I can get cardio. If someone likes running, by all means, run. As long as you have proper mechanics, I'm gonna go ahead and say that. Mm-hmm. But I ain't um, got that. You gotta make it. You gotta make this whole thing like a date. Like, why not make it a date? Like, you like to go. Me and my wife like to go hiking at times. We used to go run together after we ate. We used to uh, work out together. She would do her own thing, but we'd be in the gym together. You know what I mean? Right. So like, why not make it a date? If you like to swim, go swimming. You know, you can do stuff like that. Um, but as as a person who's married, the biggest thing you could do, especially with kids, is remove barriers for your person, your your spouse or your significant other, um, so that way they can do what what it is they need to do in order to reach their goals. And what I mean by that is, if you work out like me, I work out in the morning, mm-hmm. right? In between clients, I'm not home at that time, so I don't have any barriers, right? right. My wife is one who a lot of times has to take our son to daycare because I'm up at four o'clock in the morning, I'm gone already. Right. Right. Um, and kudos to her for that because she's she's yeah. a soldier. She's a soldier, right? Um, but it's oftentimes hard for her to work out because she has to pick him up sometimes from school too, right? Right. So now it's like she she's taking him. She's taking him. She's picking him up from school, and she works from home. And then her job is sometimes putting work meetings at lunchtime when someone would normally take her lunch. Then mm-hmm. lunch runs into another meeting. So now when does she have time to work out? She has time. But she's exhausted by the end of the day because now if I'm not there, she has to give him a bath, right? Right. And get him ready for bed. Now, what we've been trying to do, and I'll say I'm I'm it's been hard because right now it's January. It's it's super busy for, for a trainer, right? Right. Like I had to bring on a trainer, another trainer to work with me. Yeah. And uh-huh. I plan on hiring another one by the That's end of the year. We all right? trying to get to that springtime oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Get that up, <laughs> right? No, but but the biggest thing you could do is remove those barriers. So what I try to do is I try to pick my son up on 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 certain days of the week. I try to give him a bath, or sh- he likes to take showers now. So we try to give him a shower <laughs> or whatever. 
we, you know, if, if, if I can, I'll try to take him to daycare in the morning time. And she has to constantly remind me because I get off on my own tangent. And I, and I, I do get kind of selfish at times, I'm, I'll be honest. And I have to reel it back in. And I don't realize it when she says it, but then right after I'm like, oh, shoot, she's right. right. I need to change. Mm. So I need to remove those barriers for her to be able to do her, her thing. Now, granted, the other day she did that Zumba class with him. That was They had fun together. You know, she incorporated him in that. But sometimes she wants her time. And just like I get my time. So, Right. And what he's saying, I can 100% agree with, but I'm going to say in a more ignorant term. <laughs> uh, quit uh, uh, knock them barriers down. Yeah. Because a lot of people give excuses. Yeah. Be, and some are valid excuses. But then some people use those valid excuses as a crutch. It's yeah, like, right. well, I can't do it because of this, this, and that. Yeah. So, like, and I am one of those people that used to use a lot of excuses. Well, mm-hmm. I can't do it because I got to take the kids here. I got to do this with the kids. I got to do that. And my wife would do the same thing. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay. Like, for example, she works out on Mondays and Saturdays. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to, and that's why I was like, we got to start kind of pushing the podcast a little bit more back so she can go work out. Mm-hmm. Because I don't want it to be excuses because... Well, if a lot of people don't know, we were all in the same fraternity. Mm. Excuses are the essence of nothingness. Yeah. The build bridges to nowhere. Those mm. who master these tools of incompetence yeah. are masters mm. of nothing at all. Yeah. I know you felt like I know you thought I was gonna jump in there. Nah, with you, you were you, at first he uh, his mouth was hey, about, I to, was about to jump his, in. His mouth was, <laughs> I wasn't gonna do you know, it. Like, I'm gonna let you have I'm it. gonna let you have <laughs> it. Because <laughs> I know what you want. <laughs> but yeah, that whole mentality, and I think a lot of times us as a community, we have that mentality. Is like, okay, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. But you can't mess up my stuff. Yeah. And then it's like, That's well, me. what about your other person? That like, was me. That was definitely mm-hmm. me. Don't mess up my stuff yeah. because I say I was gonna do it. So as long as you ain't messing me up, we good. Yeah. But it's like we don't, especially if you're married now. Oh yeah. All yeah. three of us married. Ugh, yeah. 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 For sure. <laughs> That's what it is. All right. Now that That's cool. So my issue was, look. I go to the gym, and of course, Ronnie B's my wife. You know yeah. this already. She comes with me. Okay. And she's like, okay, so what are we going to do? And I'm like, I know what I do. <laughs> 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 what I do, and if I, t- I don't know if you want to lighten it up to do what I'm doing. Yeah. But I'm not, you know, because the second you give me the whole, oh, that's too hard. Okay, you need to go over there. Yeah. And I got to go. I'm like, I, I, I got, you know, I, I got a whole bunch of stuff I got to get done. I yeah. only got a little bit of time. Yeah. Paige is waiting. I can't do the, so I'm like, I don't, how do I get hurt? Like, look, you, you got this, this is your world. You do this. Yeah. While I do this, cause I'm not, I'm inadequate with the explanation on how to get you what you want, because I just do what I do. I got you. I, yeah. So like, um, one thing that y'all could do is sit down beforehand, like let's say on a Sunday, if y'all not doing nothing, you know, just chilling or whatever, or whatever day that it is where y'all have some free time where you can sit down and just kind of map out your goals and how you can get there, right? Like right. as far as um, what exercises, if let's say she wanted, let's say she wanted a stronger upper body, right. what exercises are going to get her a stronger upper body, right? right? And you can make it to where, like I said, make it like a date, right? You can set it up to where if you know what the gym layout is, let's say she uses dumbbells for, for, for something and it's right next to the barbell squat rack. Or let's say you can use dumbbells for the se- a similar exercise or, right. or the exercise that you're trying to work towards has dumbbells involved. That way you can still kind of look at her form, but she can use the weight that's proper for what she's trying to do. Right. You feel mm. me? So like map out your plan. And it doesn't have to be 20 different exercises. There's a lot of different things that you can do Right. But there's there's some that that serve a better purpose and have uh, a better uh, result for within that time frame that you're looking at. So if you only got 30 minutes to work out, shoot, you can hit three compound lifts and be good. You know what I mean? And and on the days where you can't go to the gym, you know, just hit some stuff in the house, you know. Right. But um, but back to your question, though, like to answer your question, like it's it's all about establishing. establishing what those goals are and how to get there Re- reverse engineering your goals if i know that i want to get a bigger squat i need to squat so mm. how do i do that i need a squat rack or i need uh dumbbells 
or I need a resistance band that'll allow me to do it. And if she wants to do something that her upper body is, is more involved, okay, well then maybe she needs some dumbbells while I'm using some dumbbells and we're sitting right next to each other or we're standing right next to each other while we're doing these exercises. Right. So that way we can, one, hold each other accountable, and two, if you're more knowledgeable in the way the form's supposed to look, then you could watch her form or vice versa. You never know, you right. know? So that's one way to do it, though. Okay, respect. Uh, so also in the gym, I'm definitely, I don't know if there's a term for this, who this person is, but I feel like I'm that if there's ever a term for it. It's like a gym loner. Okay. I don't, I don't really want to have in-depth conversations yeah. with nobody. I just want to, only, only thing I want to give you is that. Let's get it. You on that? Yeah. You not? Yeah. I, All right. I'm, I'm going to get it. How many you got left? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's it. Real yeah. quick that's responses. It. Yeah, yeah. But I have, so, you know, you know J-Lo. Yeah. He'll get in it, and it's a lot of conversing. Uh, and I'm like, too much do talk, I, not enough work. How yeah. do, but for him, it works because he he's somebody. He'll stay in the gym for three hours. Yeah, and do his thing. Yeah, I'm like, that's you. That's yeah. your life. That's how you. I'm like me, buddy. Yeah, I got. I'm on a schedule, even yeah. though it don't look like I'm clearly here with the purpose. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to get in, and get out. <laughs> I need, I'm only here for a minute. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, I, I, so. I'm, how do I get to a point? Like, do I just break down? You're like, bro, shut up. Or do I just <laughs> like, like, what do you do? You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> okay. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the similar. Like, I don't, I don't like working out with people. Um, the Talk reason why is much. because, well, I'm, I'm, I'm with people all day long. Right. That's mm -hmm. true. I'm with people all day long and I want to be by myself for a minute. And that, that allows me to clear my mind. This is, some people do yoga to clear their mind. Right. Mm -hmm. I lift weights. I lift heavy weights. I, I, I enjoy wrapping my hands on a barbell, um, building up calluses, all that stuff. I, I, I do all that. Right. I put on my gangster music, listen to my you old school to Jeezy. Music. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to my old school Jeezy, yeah. you know, listen to some Gucci Mane. You know? <laughs> bro, I'm going to tell you what. <laughs> I listen to old school Webby, bro. Oh, yeah. Web Boosie, hey. Boosie Bad. Boosie Webby. I'm oh, there, dog. Rick boy. Ross. Ross? Oh, I listen to Ross. Oh, boy. Ross? Man, boy. hey. Quarter <laughs> Miami. <laughs> I was banging out on the way over here. So, no, but but the way, man, I'll be honest. Like, so my family's from Jersey. They're very blunt people. <clears throat> okay. Right? Mm. I keep it real. And I don't try to be rude, but I'm like, look, I, I ain't got that much time. You know, I respect your conversation. Right. And I respect you, but I'm going to have to, like, this <laughs> is my this is my time to clear my mind. Just explain mm. to him. You know, I make it about my mental health, This, this which is important yeah. mm -hmm. it's important like this is this Very is my true. time to to decompress this is my time to gather my thoughts before i go to my next client this is my time to just let loose if if i if i'm feeling good and i know like look i need to go to the gym i need to go get it in right now i only got an hour i mean i i gotta do it you know what i mean so my thought process what i wanted what i was gonna do I was like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna buy me some really big headphones. Oh, I do that. So they like, you know, like yeah. it's rude to yeah. tell me, hey, take. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're hey, working out. A, a hoodie and some headphones will do a, a one. It's hey, wonderful. I got, I stay with my Beats. So <laughs> like, they, they always, in, they always with me. So if I want to go for a walk. Get some. Oh, no, nah, because the thing so, is, I have the insulation. little earbuds, but my ears are big. They keep uh, dropping out. Yeah, I got them, too. I got them, too. If I were going outside and, like, doing, like, sprints, those are better for me. Mm. But if I'm doing, like, walking or anything, and I'm in an area, I typically work out in the areas where I train people. So people right. see my face all the time. Mm -hmm. And they'll stop me and say, hey, you're that trainer, right? You know, if I don't have my headphones on. If not, they'll just hit me with this. Which I'm okay with. Like I like I don't mind talking to people, but if I'm in my zone and yeah. it's my time, time to get it. On me. Means don't talk to me. You know what I mean? So yeah, you might want to invest. I'm in gonna them. get me some. Mm. Yeah, I'm you might want to invest in and them. Drop and call it a day. And yeah, yeah, yeah you might want to. Yeah, do that. I was. Uh, matter of fact, when I leave here, that's where I'm going. Yeah. Some bigger headphones. Mm -hmm. gotcha. <laughs> I'm gonna get no, because too. like. Even when I try to jog or stuff mm -hmm. like that, yeah. because my ears so big, like man, them little buds be dropping out of my ears. I'm like, man, <laughs> I'm spending three hundred dollars on these buds. What you got, the AirPods? 
Uh, no, I got the um. The there was some sour? Samsung. Oh yeah, um, the little the nugs. Yeah, yeah. And they go in there, but my ears. Yeah, like, I, I can't do them. I'm like, uh, I, it has to. I have to have. If I if I'm gonna do something like that, I gotta wrap around. The yeah, too. this I got the, ears, It'll fall out my ears too. I got the the little skull candy with the hook. Yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah it's gonna like it works, but it's still not big enough yeah. to let you know. Shut up. Get you at least, <laughs> at least get you those beat solos. Yeah, the beat solos. Yeah, just I got like the solos. I like yeah. the solos. Um, my brother has the over the ear, the bigger ones, but I feel like that's it was too much for me. So I just like the solos. They do the job, you know. Okay. Mm. You know, and you know, kind of gives you that old school feel. Like people used to wear them big headphones with. Mm-hmm. The, yeah, you know, I like I like the gritty type yeah, stuff. That's mm-hmm. why I named my business Grit and Grind. You know, yeah, like yeah. got respect like gritty stuff. You know, so mm-hmm. all right. Well, I mean, I know we touched on it earlier, but let's take a like a, a deep dive into how do you get started on your on your journey like how because i know originally you were saying like if whatever you're not doing just start doing it even just like kind of put it in there yeah but like is there is there more like okay right now my mission is i'm going back to the six pack that's what i want okay right that's possible very possible yeah mm-hmm. it's, attainable. it's attainable <laughs> it's attainable it's <laughs> attainable like, yeah i'm going back to six pack yeah thing is my daughter's in my life. Yeah. Love, love of my life. Yeah. At the same time, she requires a lot of time. Understandable. <laughs> okay. I got my wife. Second love of my life. I, you know, let me reverse that because she'll be mad. That's my first love. Of my <laughs> <laughs> first yeah. love of my life. Well, Second, you were number <laughs> one. You number Look, one. Texas, number don't one. get shot. Yeah. Don't get. Okay. You know. Yeah. I don't care about that. <laughs> so you know. But again, yeah, requires a lot of a lot of time. Yeah. And so I'm like. What I used to do was day and night. Like every bro, abs is an everyday thing. It's yeah. just you wake up, you get abs. Yeah. Or get to the gym. Like back then, big headphones was the only headphones you could have. Yeah. I got mine on. Nobody's gonna bother me. I'm in. Yeah. But I can't. In, in, in this part of the journey, it's it's a team sport. Yeah. So I can't shut the world out like I used to. I understand mm-hmm. that. So now I have to I have to pick a player two and and a player three and I'm trying to figure out how to incorporate all y'all. Boy, I'm in like Halo. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, how do I how do I make everybody in here an active participant? Yeah, in what I'm trying to achieve. Yeah, but at the same time, be like, but the ultimate is, is, is still me though. Yeah. yeah. So I, I want to be selfish, but can't be. I can't be selfish. selfish. I mean, I, I say I say that you can be selfish to, to an extent, right? With other people's livelihood in mind, right? Mm-hmm. Like we're we're all fathers, right? So mm-hmm. you yeah. have to be. I gotta you be. Have, you have to be a, a little selfish. You have to take care of yourself because how are you not going to take how are you going to take care of somebody else if you can't take care of yourself? True. You feel mm-hmm. me? So what I what I always tell people though is like little things, right? Like we we were talking before, and we were talking about running before you try to walk. Yeah. Start walking, right? In in life. What I mean by that is start it slow. Don't restrict yourself from things. You know, mm-hmm. like uh I believe that people shouldn't take things out of their 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 diet, so to speak, right? If you want to have a sugar cookie, have a sugar cookie, but don't keep it in your house. You gotta go get mm-hmm. it. You know what I mean? Make it harder for yourself. Now from a nutritional standpoint, make it harder for yourself to get those things, but you're still able to have them. But instead, start incorporating healthier things. So where the sugar cookies used to be, how about you put like, you know, some fruit. You know, if the sugar cookies were sitting on on top of the counter, put a bowl of fruit right there instead. You feel me? Mm. You know, so try to substitute what you're you're doing for sweets in the house for healthier options. You know, instead of frying your chicken, you know, grill your chicken. You know, start adding that type of stuff. If if you're not eating veggies, you said you need to buy your grill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Definitely everybody needs one. Um, another thing I would say, like with with the family aspect, look at places that require activity, and you know, in areas where there there is parks, nice parks. Go to a park, right? Um, my wife loves this park that's not too far away from us. It's actually close to my mother in law's house. So we'll go there right. and then just let our son run rampant. And granted, we got to run around with him because mm-hmm. it's two. <laughs> he's two, you know? So <laughs> so you stay active in that sense, right? Um, set yourself up to where y'all can do things together. 
You know, even if like, let's say you can't get to the gym and you don't have any weights, maybe you can get some resistance bands or something like that. And y'all can play with the resistance bands. Kids love to just pull on bands. Yeah. Just hook it to a door and just let them pull on it. You know, as long mm. as it's not something that's going to slap them in the face. Right. You know, we don't want that. Ooh, I saw, be, be careful I, I, with I it. I saw this. Boy. Instagram one. Will... Oh, boy. I see Ooh, some bad. Oh, I've had, I, boy, I've, I felt bad one time. I was doing a boot camp and um, this lady was, I had them uh, attached to the bands and they were doing some, some crawls. Right. Mm. Some bear crawls. And this thing, I swear the band was brand new, but this thing just popped. And she went and flew forward. Yeah, it was. I was like, "Are you okay?" And she was older, so I was like, "I felt bad," but at the same time, she was, she was just laughing. So I was like, "We just all bust out laughing." So it was good. Mm -hmm. It was good. Mean? Liability's over. Okay, you're good. Hey, Let's get as back long as you're laughing, we good. We <laughs> good. We laughing. We good. Let's get back to the workout. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, but yeah, like I said, just don't 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 restrict yourself and try to set yourself up for 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 success rather than failure. So, you know, keeping the healthier items in, right. in the house and and um, trying to make it to where y'all are doing um, things together um, when you're not doing the things on your own. Now, from an individual standpoint, I think everyone, at, at, at least, if you're not doing any resistance training right now, you need to be doing resistance training because what happens is with muscle, um, you will burn more calories long-term. Most mm. people think like, you burn, you burn calories, a lot of calories at one time, if you go running, but if you build lean muscle, it actually eats away at body fat. Right. And it's actually, it gives you cardio as well. So if you're lifting highly intense, now, and I'm not talking about like high intensity interval training. If you're list, lifting high and highly intense, like let's say you're doing like a bench press, mm -hmm. right? And you do five sets of five and you're taking two to three minute rest periods in between. You're actually doing better for your heart with that because it actually breaks down the body fat or the visceral fat that goes around the heart, right? Oh, so mm -hmm. you start doing resistance training. It's medicine. Most people think that, that they have to be in the gym five days out of the week. You only really need two for the average person. Two. Jesus. Now, if you, if you and your spouse can, can agree on two days where you can do your thing and two days where she can do her thing, then you still got three other days that y'all can spend together. Right. You know what I mean? And on those days that she's in the gym and you're, let's say, watching the kiddo, right? You could be doing something with your kiddo in the house, so it's always time to do something, right? Mm -hmm. We always have we always have the ability to do something. You're not always with your spouse. Your spouse isn't always with you. Your kid's not always with you. And if and if I, the uh, the alternative is or the opposite is is the truth, like where they are with you at that time, there's always something that y'all can do together, right? Right. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I also uh, one thing I think is huge um, as well. If if you have no experience, and I'm not saying this because I'm a personal trainer, and you know, I don't, I don't ever push personal training on anybody because right. I'm a rebel. If you try to push something on me, I'm gonna do the exact opposite, right? Mm -hmm. But I do think that it's important that the average person that's not anywhere near the fitness world should do some type of personal training, at least for four weeks, to learn the form. Yeah, because you can literally get in there and think that you're doing something right because you got Smith machines and you got. Um, you know, all these machines that tell you what to do. Yeah, get a little picture on the yeah, side. Yeah, give you the picture. Mm -hmm. But then you get out there and try to do a barbell thinking it's the same thing, and it's not. It's not. Yeah, well, it definitely, totally it's different. Totally different. So, I mean, I've seen, I've seen, I sad to say that, that you know, in, in the fitness industry, it, it's starting to get, it's not oversaturated. There's a lot of people that need help, right? Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of trainers that don't know what they're doing. And mm -hmm. I can't say that I know everything, excuse me, mm -hmm. but I know a lot of things that, that the average person does not. And right. I can teach them how to live properly, right? So, but I, I saw a, a chick in the gym over lock, uh, right after lockdown, um, opened the gyms back up, right? And she was doing uh, deadlifts. And if, I don't know if you if you guys are familiar with how a deadlift's supposed to yep. look, but you're not supposed to round your back no. when you do a deadlift. Yeah, you know, she was just doing like, I'm like, look, I, went, I had to stop her and say, look, this is not the right way to do it. And she had a personal trainer. Yeah. She and he had, was just like, get she it. Had, she had an online personal so. Yes, I, I think everybody should get a trainer, but you need to vet them first and make sure that they're a decent personal trainer. No. They don't have to be world renowned, but they need to know what they're talking about. Yeah, at least mm. know form. Yeah, at what? least know the form. So because somebody that can teach teach proper form. Go ahead. That was something that I was thinking about because I have pre consistent. Uh, okay, oh, like on. I have pre existing conditions. Mm -hmm. And with me in pre-existing conditions, I'm a diabetic. Yeah. Like when I was younger, I was like, man, 
it don't matter. I'm going to just hit this weight. Mm -hmm. We're going to make this happen. Mm -hmm. And it, it, a lot of stuff came. Yeah. But as I got older, I'm like, man, I can't hit it the same way yeah. I used to. And mm -hmm. it's like, I don't want to go to that point where it's like, oh, well, you're a diabetic. You're not going to get that way. Yeah. And I'm like, bruh. I don't want to be the skinny dude and just be like, oh, well, he's skinny. Yeah. It's like, bro, I still want the, oh, he you looks wanna, sexy with you it. You want to feel the firm. Yeah. yeah you, like, want the, you, want the, you want the new definition of the now, dad body. Now, is there a, yes. It's like, is there a different way of doing it versus with pre-existing conditions versus just managing certain things as a person that doesn't have it? Because- like, for example, I was telling you earlier, yeah. I was hitting the mile. Yeah. Then I was like, hey, my, knee, my knees hurt. Yeah. Like, bruh, like, and then I did half a mile. And I was telling him that. He was like, bro, you got to make sure you stretching, doing all the other no, stuff, I'm, too. I'm a firm believer in the warm-up. Because in oh, my yeah. past, I was I was not the warm-up guy. Yeah, me neither. But now, because oh. I'm like, I have to stretch. Most of I my gotta. clients get more exhausted before we actually work out. Because I'm taking them through. I don't do just like straight up stretching before we work out. We do something called priming, mm -hmm. which is a lot of the movements are yoga based. But think yoga. They say yoga ain't no joke. But this, what we're doing is like a lot of people do like yoga for like relaxation. And there's power yoga. This is closer to like power yoga. Mm -hmm. Like you're activating, you're squeezing. You're, if, you, if you got messed up shoulders, then we over here, you know, pulling the shoulders back and making sure that we're like turning those muscles on, engaging, using bands to kind of fire that up. Mm -hmm. So th that's huge. Yeah, the warm-up is, is is huge. Right. Yeah. But I, I get I get what your question is. So you, you're saying that um, what is it any different for someone with a pre-existing yes. condition? And in, in my opinion, it, it depends. It depends on what the pre-existing condition is, right? Um, whether it be, you know, um, an internal thing or like a outside physical thing, like a messed up knee or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um realistically in the grand scheme everybody should be doing resistance training regardless of what they got going on and i say this because i i read a lot of stuff and there's studies where there's a lady who had osteopenia um which is pre osteoporosis mm -hmm. and um she started doing resistance training and got to the point where she actually reversed that right mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying there's people who have high blood pressure they start doing resistance training and it lowers their blood pressure, mm -hmm. right? right. And, and in conjunction with better nutrition too, but it lowers their blood pressure. So like for someone with diabetes, it helps to regulate your insulin levels. It helps to regulate um, your blood sugar and whatnot. It, all that stuff is, is, is something to monitor um, as a personal trainer. Like if you have, if you have issues with asthma or something like that, I want to watch that. But I'm not going to train you any differently because because okay. you have that going on. Right. I'm going to maybe change the pace that we go, but I'm not going to I'm not going to train you any differently. Mm. I believe everybody should train full body because we live a full body life. You know, right. you got you got to you want to have a better foundation for your lifestyle. Why not do resistance training, and then and then supplement your your cardio or things that you like. Like if you like to go hiking, if you like to go swimming, or whatever. You know, like you got to be able to do that stuff. You know, mm. we gotta be we gotta be well for our kids, right? Because I, I apologize. Saying, I was the only reason I was asking that is because a lot of people do have pre-existing mm. conditions, but some people want. I was one of those people. It's like, yeah. man, when I was younger, <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I'm a diabetic, bro. And my sugar high, I'll go get some real quick after mm. uh and all that, and just get back at it. But as I got older, I was like, bro. Like, man, my knees uh, on water weight and stuff. Yeah. I'm like, oh, man, I'm sick of water weight. Yeah. I'm like, and then, like, even my ankles, like, when I be running, mm -hmm. man, I got them fat cankles and stuff. I'm like, bruh. Yeah. Bruh, I, I look like the old lady in the gym with the cankles. I'm only 35. Yeah. And I'm like, I got to make sure I change some things with life. Yeah. You mm. just got to you gotta find what's right for you, honestly. Mm. I mean, I, resistance training, like I said. And there's a lot of different ways to do resistance training. You have mm. kettlebells, barbells, dumbbells, body weight, resistance bands, TRX, like all these different things. But you just got to make sure that you're doing what's right for you towards your goals. Right. So I always say, any, anytime somebody asks me a question about fitness, I'm like, well, typically the answer most trainers, if they're, they've been doing this for a little while, I'll say it depends. 
on on that person, right? Mm-hmm. right. So it, it does depend on the predisposing or the the uh, the uh, the condition that the person has, but in the grand scheme of things, it makes sense for people to do resistance training so that way they can live a better quality of life. Okay. Okay. When it comes to whey protein pre workouts, all because you know you walk into the you yeah. walk into your GNC or your nutrition shop, all the supplements. Everything's on the wall. Yeah. So, what when? Because I know a lot of people swear by me. I was never a real. I never really got into them. Yeah. So I don't like. I don't either. Okay. Not really. Not really. The, so the the things the, the things that I supplement with um are so I don't do I don't do protein powders typically. We mm. have some at the house. Um, I got some from uh from a friend. Um, that works for a company, so I just I have it, right? Mm. And every once in a while, I use it if I don't have anything to throw on my smoothie. Like I, I would use like a Greek yogurt typically, but I, uh, I don't really believe that people need to supplement if they're not already taking care of everything else. So like, if your sleep is not on point, if you're not drinking enough water, All if right. you're not working out, if you're not mobilizing your body, if you're not eating did i say that eating all your foods that you're supposed to right like, mm-hmm. you know i have clients who only eat one meal a day mm-hmm. and one meal a day is not not good for for what you're trying to, to trying to do you got to fuel the body you got to fuel your movements right. you got to fuel the processes that your body needs to be able to do right so um as far as like supplements go the one that i do take um that i believe in and there's a lot of studies and i didn't used to take this back in high school all my friends used to take it creatine it does mm. help. Creatine is I very... I thought they said creatine make you fat. No. If you you got to drink water with creatine. Creatine is actually... The reason why I take it is because for your cognition, like your brain, it helps to keep you sharp. Okay. Mm. Even when you get older, right? <laughs> or if people go through like surgeries and stuff, right? And they can't use like their right arm. Drinking like a creatine and not like a whole bunch. Just try to take a little bit of creatine. Now, not everybody responds... The creatine well some people do get bloated from it right and it may not be good for them right so they don't take it right mm. but for me like it works right so creatine mm. is a good one um the supplements that i do take a lot of them come from um uh indian um background so like ashwagandha it helps me with it helps for men it helps to boost your testosterone mm. but it also helps to calm i your heard body. about that one. okay i take I turmeric for inflammation you know what i mean like these are all things that are natural so right. those are the type of supplements I take. I don't take BCAAs. I don't. I don't. I don't do that. You know what? Well, people ask me what kind of protein powder do you do you take. I'm like, I don't take none. I said, bro, I eat steak. I eat chicken. <laughs> like, I eat salmon. Well, you know, they I always eat. tell you that the whole eating red meat thing because no. I love a good steak. Yeah, no. I don't get it twisted, man. No, I eat. I eat steak. I eat ground beef. I eat that stuff. Right. I don't. I don't do it every day. Mm, right. Not everybody. Some people can do it every day and and have like good cholesterol levels and whatnot. And, and there's so many new things when it comes to, to fitness and nutrition that we're still learning to this day. Like some people thought that LDL cholesterol, all LDL cholesterol was bad. But there's things that show that LDL, certain there's different types of LDL cholesterol. Now, I don't know all of it because I'm not a doctor, mm-hmm. but there are certain types of LDL cholesterol that are good okay. for you. You know, like people didn't used to eat the whole egg because egg yolks are bad. Bro, I eat four or five eggs in the morning for breakfast. The whole thing. I ain't gonna lie. I don't care if that's bad or good. I, I've oh, done give me it. the whole egg. Uh, I want my it eggs all. Better be yellow. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Give my me wife, yellow. she likes egg whites, and that's to each their own. You know, and you know, her she's going through her own things that she's she's trying to work through and whatnot, and I just support her. But what I what I do is like if I'm not I'm not gonna live like I don't I don't live fat free. I eat healthy fats. You feel right. me? Like. Some people just don't want fat in their in their foods at all. Well, people don't realize that fats actually help to get rid of fats. Hmm. Yeah, I got my yeah fat it's to another jump my other fat. It's exactly, <laughs> pretty much. It was, if you think about if you think about like you know when you see like bacon grease when it solidifies it turns white. Yeah. Same thing happens in our bodies. There's white white matter fat and there's brown fat, which brown fat is active fat. Mm. So I I eat like olive oils in my in my meals. Like I make my own salad dressing. I just pour olive oil and a little bit of white vinegar and then a little bit of my salt and whatever else I put in it, and it, it's a healthier it's a healthier option than right. you know what I mean. I guess I gotta get rid of my Caesar dressing. Man, that must be so. Hey, good look, though. why take it? Why take it away? Just maybe change how much you have it. 
Mm. I see the dressing. Moderation. Moderation. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I do moderation <laughs> sometimes, but it's like that extra. Yeah. It's like, and, and that's what be bad for me. Well, so, so here's where moderation, if you want that extra, uh, right? Mm. Are you going to do that two days from now? You know what I mean? Like this weekend, I'm going to a housewarming party, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then afterwards, my wife and I got a hotel downtown because we're staying. We're going all the way to Red Oak. So I was like, I'm not driving all the way back up to near Denton, right? Mm-hmm. right. So um, the other day, she was like, I was. I asked her. I said, Do you want to go out to eat? And she was like, She she made this decision and said no because we're gonna go out on Saturday. Mm. You feel me? That's moderation. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, I respect that. Switch switch it up. So if you know like there's something you really want to do during the week, you really want that Caesar dressing. Maybe you need to have a vinaigrette over a uh, homemade vinaigrette over on Saturday. Okay. You feel me? So like, that's why that's why I always say like I don't take things away from people because who wants to be restricted? Right. Don't, so don't it's restrict too hard yourself. to maintain. Okay, I gotta hit this one real quick before we switch it up because I know you're on a time limit. Yeah. Now my thing is, I just want to know this before we gonna switch it up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Am I doing this wrong? Because I heard it somewhere, but I'm like, I always see. I'm trying to get away from saying the N word too much, but all we see these skinny dudes be talking about, oh, yeah, like you basically eat one solid meal and the rest of them are like, oh, protein drinks or smoothies and stuff like that. Is that right? Wrong? Help I'm, me out here. So, cause I, I'm, I'm I a say, big boy. I say to eat their own, but I I firmly believe that people should eat whole foods. And they should have at least three meals a day. Now, granted, depending on the type of per- the, how big you are, you may need more protein than others. And it, sometimes it's harder to digest only three meals worth of protein at, like, let's say you need 200 grams of protein and you got to split it over three meals. That's a lot of protein, right? Mm-hmm. Some people can't digest that. So maybe having, like, four or five might might help with digestion. But I I don't I don't believe in just, like, drinking <laughs> all my calories. Like, I want it. I want my food. God put food on it. In my opinion, God put food or animals on this earth for us to be able to eat, right? Mm-hmm. That's why we say grace, mm-hmm. right? That's why we we pray over our food, right? Thank right. you for that, right? Right. So, enjoy your meals. Eat. You know what I mean? It. People have a bad relationship with food. That's where we have a, a, an, an issue. They they some people use it as comfort, right? Mm-hmm. Right. And every once in a while, you might need that comfort, but don't make it a, a binge thing. You know, we have this binge restrict. You look at some of these bodybuilders. They restrict themselves all the way up until a show, and then they binge, and then they gain all this weight. And when instead they could just eat whole foods and you know build their metabolism up to where they can eat the things that they want. I, people ask me how many calories I eat in a day, and they're like, "How much you eat? Like eighteen hundred calories?" I said, "Heck no, I would starve at eighteen hundred calories. Right. Probably eat three thousand to thirty five hundred calories a day." Man, yeah, I think sounds I mean, lovely. But the reason why, though, is because I, I got to where I re- kind of reverse dieted myself, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I established a new maintenance level for my body, right? right. So if I need, you know, 3,500 calories just to, to live my life normally, then if I want to lose weight, if I want to cut up, all I need is 3,000 calories. Mm. You feel me? Right. <laughs> so and still I'm still hungry. eating more, yeah. you know? So it's just, it, it, you, you got to eat. If you... if if you you can't cut you can't cut body weight you can't cut uh, body fat or do like a body recomposition if you don't even know where your level is yet. So what about the whole caloral uh, caloric or I I ain't gonna lie act caloric like I'm intake and, yeah and deficit. Um, like, yeah that yeah. deficit yeah that's, Be- that's 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 yeah so okay so um, we were talking about this before we got on but um, my my client um, that I told you she wanted to get down to one forty five. Mm-hmm. Um, she started at like 162 and I told her, I said, look, it's not, it's not going to happen in three months. And she was like, well, I want to try. She said, I would love to be done in three months. And I said, okay, that's fine. I said, this is a longer process because there's a lot of things that go into it. You got to account for real life and human behavior because you're, I said, there's, there could be a time where you self-sabotage and she did. And she realized that she was in the wrong and she flipped things to where she was, she was actually doing good at the time and she self-sabotaged. Right. Um, but anyway, um, she looks better at 172 than she d- did at 145 because she is lean muscle. She's not bulky. She looks like what you would see like as a, a as a firm woman, right? right? Who who has, you know, a good physique, right? And she's still like we're we're working on um now we're going to try to work on cutting cuz we're getting out of a strength phase for her cuz you kind of want everybody needs to bulk so mm-hmm. that we need to know how to cut, right? Right. Um 
But anyway, um, the the thing that I wanted her to do was try to get to 2,000 calories. She was eating 1,100 maybe at first. She's up to like 1,500 to 1,700. I said, look, just slowly hmm. increase your calories. Because if you increase your calories, you're setting now a new what they call homeostasis for the body, where the body is like, you know, happy, right? Mm. So if I'm going from 1,100 to, to 2,000, now when she wants to reduce, that deficit comes in. This is where people are like, this is where people start cherry picking studies. They're like, you got to eat in the deficit in order to, to, to lose weight. Yes, you're right. You do have to eat in a deficit if you want to lose body fat. But how do you know what a deficit is if you don't even know where zero is? Right. You feel me? Yeah. You, it, it, or how do you know if how do you know if you're you're at your maintenance level if you never track your food? Now, granted, I don't have all my clients track food. I don't. Um, and the reason why is because if I can get, just get them to eat, because most of them are only eating one one or one two two meals a day and not enough protein. If I can get them to eat enough protein, guarantee you they'll see results. Because protein will keep the body full, and then you won't be eating all the other carbs and stuff like that. If you hit your protein goals first, everything else will nine times out of ten fall into place. As long as you have a good relationship with with food, meaning you're not just eating to to um, eating to c- comfort yourself, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so okay. legit. Well, I mean, I would have jumped into the last topic, but we're reaching that limit on time. Yes, mm-hmm. okay. and you know, <clears throat> yeah. At this point, we usually go around and let people plug what they plug in. Yeah. We'll start on this side because he has his whole little speech thing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyways. <laughs> anyways, there's always that one person. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's got to be. Mm-hmm. So, as always, love to shout out my beautiful wife. Love you, baby. Um, I want to always plug her businesses and support because that's one thing I feel we all should do. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, look up her pages. Traces like mine, mink. Uh, um, sorry, Yanni like mine. Um, wasted desire. It's on Facebook, Instagram. Her actual page now is for the website is traceslikemine.com. Mm. Y'all check it out. Um, traces like mine. Basically, it's a lot of hair care product, different things like that, that a lot of black women really need to look up because our hair, women's hair, black women's hair is not the same as everyone else's hair. Yeah. Um, Yanni like mine, ladies, I'm being better in 2022. Um, just make sure you take care of your hygiene yeah. because a lot of women, I know we all say, oh, just the soap and the rag thing. But dudes, if they're being honest, that don't work for everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm just being honest. Yeah. Now, the other one, Wasted Desire, this is Waste Bees. They actually look very nice. Mm. Um, Anklets, ankle beads, different things like that. Mm. Just to spice up your style a little bit. Mm. No, I don't have COVID. I just got to clear my throat, and I don't want to make all that noise on the air. <laughs> But nah, you know how some people, everything COVID. Oh, yeah. Man, you cough, this COVID. Is, yeah. Oh, you sneeze, that's COVID it's too. COVID nation. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, that's what we all got. Like, I got to clear my throat, but then I'm like, man, if I start clearing my throat on air, oh, oh yeah. man, what that dude got on air? Homie over there sweating, he, he mm-hmm. got COVID. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what is he doing? Oh, he man? doing too much. Oh, yeah. what's mm-hmm. going on there? No. Yeah. I, I, if I right now during COVID times, I would hate to be a Greek fraternity. Yeah. Because everybody be like, oh, they got that alpha. Right? They got that. They got that. Oh, hey, they got. Wait, they got. What, they got the Delta Crime. The, the Delta Crime. <laughs> Whatever that is. I'm that like, right hold on. There. Wait, what? What? They like mixing them now? What? I didn't know. It's like a drink. It's like a drink. Yeah, making yeah. cocktails. Virus yeah. mm-hmm. cocktails. Yeah, anyway, this is a bartender. Nature is a bartender. Yeah. Uh, shout out my cousin Mike. He's back on the scene. Bully Wiggles. He doing his little. Well, not little. He's doing his. Acting situation, trying to get off that off the ground. Shout out to you. Yeah. Shout out to my cousin Tyler Bailey. He does clothes, luxury clothes by luxury guy. Uh, shout out myself. I do a podcast. And uh, D Mac, he's a barber. And shout out mom. Hey mom. And I'm gonna pass it on. Right on. So uh, 
if y'all do not know who I who I am, I'm Grit and Grind Fitness. Um, I do personal training, group classes. I do it all. Like it does not matter. I train people virtually. I train people, you know, in person. Whatever, right? But go to www.gritandgrindfitness.com. That's G R I T, the letter N, grind, G R I N D, fitness.com. If you go onto my website, you can see all of the services there. Follow us on Instagram at G and G Fitness PT. Underneath my website, um, there's a partners page. Um, I wholeheartedly believe in mental health um, and, and wellness for um, all of all of people, but especially for the Black community. So I got two people on there so far that are excellent. I'm going to add some more people that that will help anybody in in any kind of uh, holistic wellness site, but. Uh, we have a nutritionist on there, a dietitian, registered dietitian. Uh, shout out the uh, Melanin Poppin RDN. Mm. She's actually uh, right here in Irving. Oh, um, she's yeah, she's dope. She's dope. She preaches the same stuff I preach, so that's why me and her connected. Um, definitely gotta get love, sis. And then um, a mental health therapist that's based out of Aubrey. She's she's virtual, um, and she's her books are pretty much full up. But please try to get on the waiting list. If she can't get you, she can get somebody else, uh, get you with somebody else that has similar uh, mm-hmm. mindset. But her name is uh, Ebony Jones, and she works with uh, Bridges to Healing um, LLC. She's ba- they were based out of California, but she's the only one here in Texas now. So mm-hmm. um, sisters is the real deal. I try to get her with multiple clients before. Um, but uh, shout out to Denton Fitness Center. I do training up in Denton. I do training over in Coppell at the Grind. Um, and then also uh, shout out to uh, y'all remember Sade Rogers from UNT was yeah. on. You remember Sade? Yeah. She, I actually just talked to her on Facebook yesterday. So shout out to Dynasty Dance Academy oh, um, legit. in Flower Mound. So me and her <clears throat> might do a collab on some things. And shout out to my new trainer. Y'all go follow him, uh, Marlon Banks. Um, he is an up and coming trainer. Homie has mm-hmm. a full time job. He's a dad trying to trying to make it. And um, he wants to do part time training because he wants to help the community as well. So That's y'all good. can y'all can go follow us, like I said, on <coughs> Instagram, Facebook, um, and holla at us. Man, I got. We definitely gonna start shouting you out more, Nate. Oh. I, honestly, one of the things that I think a lot of black people need to do is actually talk. Yeah. Because we don't actually help each other, talk to each other, yeah. and mm-hmm. try to figure these things out. Yeah. Like, because truth be told, I don't really am going to ask you and actually may need a little bit of training on some things just because I haven't been hitting it like yeah. I used to. Yeah. And I know there's new ways of doing things, better ways of doing things. And I ain't going to lie. I'm hungry. Yeah. Right now I'm hungry. Yeah. I am. I got a protein drink this morning, but I ain't going to lie. I'm hungry right now. Yeah. (laughs) Like, it's just growling right now. So I'm like, if you could give me better ways of doing things, why not? Because we'll go somewhere else, pay them for it. And it's not to knock any other culture. Yeah. But if other cultures help each other out, why wouldn't we do it? Yeah. Like, when it comes to fitness, it would be like, if... We have a gentleman who's of the same, kind of same situation, mm-hmm. yeah. similar genetics. I can't say that we're exactly the same because yeah. you're not my physical brother. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. your genetic form matches yeah. to a degree. So it's like, yeah. who better to talk to somebody who understands, buddy? I like fried chicken. I like. I like. Yeah, I'm I like trying what to you get like. there. I like. What you I just like. have yeah, to I like change. Like. I, I just want to get to where you got. Yeah, mm-hmm. we've been through the same things. You right. Know? Like as far as you know, going to, to to school and then doing gaining all the, the freshman fifteen and then twenty and mm-hmm. whatever it was. Right. You know, and then and then changing some some people. It depends on the direction that we go. And every once in a while, it's okay. Like you guys, you guys could probably teach me things about other stuff. And like you said, that's that's where we as the black community f- fall short is yes. because we're not that we think it's a cutthroat society. Mm-hmm. That's why I commend. Oh, another shout out to my mentor, Ade Hazley, A D E Hazley. They are tremendous. He's the reason why I got to where I am as a trainer. Mm-hmm. And and back to that point, he believes in bringing other people up. He's from he's from he's from the hood, you know. So he brought he brings. He brings people up to, to where they, they can make their way. 
right. you know you got mm. you got to make sure that that you take care of each other because ain't nobody else gonna take care of us like that you right. feel me i respect it so. and i thank you for coming on bro Appreciate i really you love. do Angela. Love like, seeing y'all again, man. I, know, right? I mean, you know? we do got to do it more often, yeah. man. We ain't that old that we so wrapped up. We can't do that. Yeah. Don't get... I got more gray hair than all y'all. You do. So, you do. You do. I, I mean, got, I'm, I'm okay with that. Salty. I'm getting a little salty up here, you, but I'm... I mean, I'm okay he, with that. That's more walked, for my son. He walked with <laughs> Jesus, bro. Yeah. He's that old. Bro. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm, but I still look good, so it don't matter. <laughs> I don't care. At the end of the day... Hey, I'm 42 in the waist and cute in the face. I need to get down past 42. <laughs> yeah. I need to get back into them 30s. So, yeah, yeah we're going to talk about that. Right I'm, on. I'm for real. Right on. All right. Mm. That being said, this has been another episode of Something for the People.